Good morning. Happy Easter. Grace and peace to you in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. He is risen. You say he is risen indeed. Ready? He is risen. He is risen indeed. Amen. I'm here with my wife, Tara, who's the pastor at Trinity United Methodist Church, and we're going to be providing uh, today's uh, Easter sunrise service. A couple of things uh, as we get started. Wanted to let you know that Bishop Hope Morgan Ward will be preaching at 9 and 11. Um, and this is going to be a conference-wide worship service, so you can join with over 200,000 United Methodists across eastern North Carolina today at 9 o'clock and 11. Uh, you've probably seen this on Facebook. You've seen this on links that we've sent out. But um, in case you haven't, you can go to nccumc.org at 9 a.m. and 11 a.m. today on Easter Sunday to worship with other Methodists and Bishop Hope Morgan Ward. Um, also want to let you know that Wrightsville United Methodist Church will be providing Easter music uh, this afternoon beginning at 1 o'clock. Uh, you can access that and that's going to be wonderful. Uh, Julia Walker Jewell is going to be playing some of the um, really popular uh, big Easter hymns. The choir is going to sing. Um, it's going to be really, really great. Also want to let you know that there's no Sundays at 6, but Pastor Christina will see you next week. As always, we invite you to remember your local church with an offering today. Um, whether that be Wrightsville, Oleander, or Trinity United Methodist Church, all the folks that are worshiping with us today, um, please remember to remember your church um, with your tithes and off offerings. Um, we're practicing social distancing today, uh, very much so. And so while I'm here with my wife, and of course Ryan Mansbury is behind the camera, you're going to be meeting Pastor Christina at her home, and also Kelly Jewell will be playing from his home today. So now I invite you to pray with me. Gracious and almighty God, as we greet the light anew this day, may we greet hope this day, salvation this day, and new life this day because Christ is alive and he lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God forevermore. Amen. Amen. And now I would like to invite the children to come up front and join me for the children's sermon. <sighs> this is the worst day ever. Just sitting here on my porch swing I went over to the church, but there was nobody there. It's the worst Easter. I've got on my hat, got on my Easter dress, and nobody, nobody, nobody can see my hat. I just, uh, I went over to the beach too, you know? We always have a sunrise service at the beach and there was nobody there. There was nobody there. I think this is the worst Easter of all time. I guess I'm just gonna sit here by myself and just be sad. Guess I'll just twiddle my thumbs all day. Um, I, I, I don't know, I don't know. I'm kind of walking around in circles in the block. You can't go anywhere. I couldn't go have our children of joy egg hunt. I don't know what we're supposed to do. What's the point of Easter? If we can't even do all this stuff. <sighs> well, I guess I can still go for a walk. Maybe I'll wear my hat. Maybe that'll be one thing that helps us not be the worst Easter ever. <sighs> I guess I'll just kind of sit in my backyard. <sighs> this is terrible. Even my Easter lily is dead. <sighs> Y'all, I don't, I don't know what to do. I don't know what to do. What a sad Easter day. Wait, somebody left something for me in my yard. I wonder what this is. Looks like a scroll. It looks like some kind of message. Just sitting here in my dead grass. Should we open it and see what it is? I don't know, maybe it's a cool Easter surprise. Um, wait, go? Go where? I can't go anywhere. We have to stay at home. Go. Goo? I, I'm not sure what I'm supposed to do with that. Wait, good. Hmm, I can use something good right now. I can use something good right now. What is, 
What's this over here? It almost makes me think of the Last Supper when Jesus washed his friend's feet, when he had communion with them. I, I don't know. I think there's more here. Oh my goodness. This is such a big... Wait. Good news? Good news? I need some good news because the only news I know right now is bad. What is this on here? Three crosses? And some Hebrew words I don't understand. Um, well, I really wish somebody would tell me what this good news is because I could use some right now. <sighs> I don't know. Maybe we need to pull out the banner. Ah, uh, good news. Chris. Who's Chris? Uh, I'm not sure. Oh, Christ, Christ. Good news, Christ. Christ what? Christ what? Christ is... Christ is a weird caterpillar thing? I don't know about that. Christ is... Wait! Christ is risen? Christ is risen? That's amazing. Oh, wow. Okay, so maybe even though I don't get to go to church, maybe even though you all, I guess you do get to see my hat, maybe even though we can't sit there and hear Mr. Kelly and Miss Julia play beautiful music, hear Pastor Doug say a sermon, maybe even though we can't Easter, Easter egg hunt and everything, maybe we can still have an amazing Easter because that Jesus is risen. I, oh my goodness, I wonder who put this here to remind me, but I'm so grateful. It makes me think that maybe that this butterfly isn't here by accident. You know what um, happens to a butterfly? Have you ever seen a butterfly? Um, I'm not sure what the word is, science teachers, hatch? You know, it, it, it looks like nothing. It looks like it's just sitting here just sitting here, remaining. This word is a Greek word that means to remain, to stay, and to wait. But then, after just a little bit, it becomes a beautiful butterfly. This is what Jesus' um, death and resurrection were like. Jesus was in the grave. They were so sad. They thought that the supper that they had was the last one that Jesus would ever share with them. But then it got even worse that there was some very bad news that Jesus died on the cross and he was buried and it seemed like he was gone forever. Those words right there below them were in Jesus language, Hebrew. And it says, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? Because he felt so sad. And then they waited. They waited, his friends. His body was all wrapped up and they thought it was all over. But then on Sunday morning, Mary, Jesus' friend, went to the garden. Maybe she was wearing a hat and maybe she wasn't, but she was sad, just like we're sad this morning at not being able to be in church together. But what she saw there wasn't a dead body. It was something even more beautiful than a butterfly. It was Jesus, and he was alive again. <sighs> I want to read you something from one of my books that, um, that I like. It talks about Jesus' love. It says, Jesus says that there is nothing broken that won't be mended, nothing sick that won't be healed, nothing dead that won't live again, because God is making everything sad come untrue. Jesus says, look, I am making everything new. So if you're sad today, and I'm a little sad because I miss you. I miss being there. I know you miss seeing Miss Christina and Miss Pam, all of your Sunday school teachers, all of the people that you love and all of your Sunday friends. But remember that we are here with you. I think that I might actually take this banner and maybe what I'm gonna do is I am going to color it in. Maybe I can color something in every day of Easter. Every day until we get to see each other again. 
uh, maybe I can color in this butterfly. And I'm wondering if you've got some paper and you can make a banner too. Um, even though you can't be in church, you could write a banner that says, Good News, Christ is Risen, or Jesus is Alive, or Hallelujah. Happy Easter, friends. Um, now I invite you to bow your head and pray with me. Dear Jesus, thank you that even when it seems like a bad day, or even the worst day, that you bring everything back to life, just like the butterfly that springs forth. You are alive again. Help us to say, Alleluia. Help us to rejoice today. You are alive. Amen. Happy Easter. I danced in the morning when the world was begun And I danced in the moon and the stars and the sun I came down from heaven and I danced on earth At Bethlehem I had my birth Dance then wherever you may be I am the Lord of the dance, said he And I'll lead you all wherever you may be And I'll lead you all in the dance, said he I danced for the scribe and the Pharisee, but they would not dance, they would not follow me. I danced for the fishermen, for James and John, they came to me and the dance went on. Dance then wherever you may be, I am the Lord of the dance, said he, and I'll lead you all wherever you may be, and I'll lead you all in the dance, said he. I danced on the Sabbath and I cured the lame The holy people said that it surely was a shame They whipped and they stripped me and they hung me high They left me there on the cross to die Dance then wherever you may be I am the Lord of the dance, said he And I'll lead you all wherever you may be And I'll lead you all in the dance, said he I danced on a Friday and the sky turned black It's hard to dance with the devil on your back They buried my body and thought that I had gone But I am the dance and I still go on Dance then wherever you may be I am the Lord of the dance, said he And I'll lead you all wherever you may be And I'll lead you all in the dance, said he They cut me down and I leapt up high I am the life that will never, never die I'll live in you if you live in me For I am the Lord of the dance, said he Dance then wherever you may be I am the Lord of the dance, said he And I'll lead you all wherever you may be And I'll lead you all in the dance, said he Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. If we haven't met, my name is Christina Turner and I am associate pastor here at Wrightsville UMC. And I am joining you here at this Easter sunrise morning from my backyard here in downtown Wilmington. It is our privilege to come to God, not only today, this Easter day, when even though we are in our homes as, as the first disciples were, we can also um, join our hearts together. We can join our voices together. We can lift up our cups of coffee or tea together and say, Christ is risen. And so I invite you to say it with me, Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. We are grateful um, now and every day for the gift of prayer. Um, here at Wrightsville, we leave a moment of silence in our prayers so that you can name a person or a situation who is heavy on your heart. We continue to lift up the all of those on the front lines fighting the COVID-19 pandemic, as well as all of those who are sick, all of those who are lonely, and all of those who, like those first disciples on Easter morning, 
are scared or anxious or maybe feel like they have no hope. In this moment of silence, I invite you to lift up either silently or out loud to God, um, the people who need your attention and care. And now I invite you, as the birds sing, as the sun rises, to pray with me. Oh God of our Good Fridays, God of our Holy Saturdays, God of our tears, we thank you that you are also God of our rejoicing. Lord, as the sun rises, it reminds us this morning and every morning that death does not have the last word, that darkness does not win, that your love is the most powerful force in the universe. Lord God, this is a strange Easter. Instead of wearing our dresses and our suits, we are gathered together on our couches and in our living rooms. Instead of greeting our friends and hearing the triumphant organ music play out, we are here with our remote controls in our hand, logging on to YouTube. And yet, Lord, we thank you for the truth that your mercies are new every morning. We thank you for the hope of that first Easter morning when Mary went to the tomb in the dark the first day of the week expecting to find one thing, but instead was surprised by something entirely new. Lord God, we thank you. We thank you that you have overcome death, that you have overcome the grave, that all of the sad things are now coming untrue. Lord, we know that there are many who are suffering. There are many who are troubled. There are many who are sick. There is more need than we could ever imagine. And we feel so helpless in the face of it. And so God, we lift up to you, the one who rose on Easter morning, who triumphed over the grave. We lift our needs to you now. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. O oh God of new life, God of resurrection, we cry out with the apostle Paul, O oh death, where is thy victory? O oh grave, where is thy sting? Death has lost its victory because you have overcome. Lord, just as you told Mary not to linger in the garden, but to go tell the good news of your resurrection, we pray that today we would go, whether in person or on video chat, over the phone or by sidewalk chat, in the mail or in our hearts, that we would proclaim there is no reason to be afraid because Christ is risen. Lord, on that first Easter morning, Mary mistook you for the gardener. And maybe Mary wasn't wrong. Maybe you are always, always tending and pruning so that new blooms may come, may burst into bloom. We ask all these things in the name of our risen Lord, and we pray as he taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. On this day that we remember Christ's triumph over the grave, we invite you to give generously. We know that this is a tight time for many of us in our community, and we as a church want to keep reaching out to provide mission and ministry in order to be good news in Wrightsville Beach. We also um, know that we want to move forward in faith and not fear. And so if you are able right now, we encourage you to maybe press pause on this video, to click over to wrightsvilleumc.org or to the Wrightsville app, or even just to do the, the old fashioned way to take out a checkbook and write a check and address that to PO Box 748, Wrightsville Beach, North Carolina, 28480. We are so grateful that because you give, we are able to keep providing worship, uh, to keep reaching out in mission, and to keep finding ways to connect with one another. 
Another opportunity to give this week is through the organization featured by our outreach committee, which is Walking Tall Wilmington and the Feast Gathering. Walking Tall is an organization aimed at helping provide spiritual community and um, food and companionship, as well as empowerment to individuals who are living in poverty or who are experiencing homelessness. It was started by, uh, started by Randy Evans a few years ago, and many of our 412 youth, as well as some of us adults, have had the opportunity to share meals with folks at the feast gathering. Their needs are greater than ever right now as they minister to folks who, who were already on the edges before the COVID-19 pandemic hit. So we invite you, if you would like to, you can click over and on the financial giving page, you can mark uh, outreach slash walking tall. Last but not least, this month's Vision 2020 campaign challenge is service outside Wrightsville UMC or outreach. It's a difficult time to find ways for outreach right now, especially when so many of us are practicing social distancing as is the kind thing to do right now. But our outreach committee this coming Saturday, April 18th, is encouraging you to take a Super Service Saturday Serve at Home Day. To take a couple of hours, maybe two hours, or some time throughout the week to find an opportunity for you, a friend, or family to serve. This might be something if you are a seamstress, like making a mask. It might be writing cards out to people who need encouragement right now. It might be post having an encouraging message on sidewalk chalk on your, on your um, driveway. It might mean picking up a gift card for some of our frontline workers in hospitals. It might mean going online shopping for somewhere like Link or Walking Tall. And it might mean uh, donating money or hosting an online fundraiser for a safe place, Family Promise, Mother Hubbards, or a charity of your choice. There are all sorts of different ways we can serve even though we are not there in person. And so we invite you to uh, think of a way for your family to serve, to um, check, our, check our website and e-blast for that list of possible service ideas, and to come back on Saturday morning on YouTube for a video devotional prepared by members of our outreach committee to help you reflect on what it means to serve. And then you're invited to take a picture of you or your family serving and to email that to me at Christina T at rightsleumc.org. And we're hoping to celebrate all of the service that we are giving to our community together. Happy Easter friends. Good morning. Our gospel lesson comes from the book of John, the 20th chapter, the first 18 verses. I invite you to hear these words of this familiar story. Early on the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene came to the tomb and saw that the stone had re been removed from the tomb. So she ran and went to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one whom Jesus loved, and said to them, They have taken the Lord out of the tomb, and we do not know where they have laid him. Then Peter and the other disciple set out and went toward the tomb. The two were running together, but the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. He bent down to look in and saw the linen wrappings lying there, but he did not go in. Then Simon Peter came, following him, and went into the tomb. He, he saw the linen wrappings lying there and the cloth that had been on Jesus' head, not lying with the linen wrappings, but rolled up in a place by itself. Then the other disciple who reached the tomb first also went in and he saw and believed. For as yet they did not understand the scripture that he must rise from the dead. Then the disciples returned to their homes. But Mary stood weeping outside the tomb. As she wept, she bent over to look into the tomb and she saw two angels in white sitting where the body of Jesus had been lying. One at the head and the other at the feet. They said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? She said to them, They have taken away my Lord, and I do not know where they have laid him. 
When she had said this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there, but she did not know that it was Jesus. Jesus said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? Whom are you looking for? Supposing him to be the gardener, she said to him, Sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have laid him, and I will take him away. Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned and said to him in Hebrew, Rabboni, which means teacher. Jesus said to her, Do not hold on to me, because I have not yet ascended to the Father. But go to my brothers and say to them, I am ascending to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene went and announced to the disciples, I have seen the Lord. And she told them that he had said to her these things. This is the word of God for all of us, the people of God. Thanks, Thanks be, be to, to God. God. Amen. So Tara and I are going to try to do something that we haven't done in 23 years of marriage and ministry, and that is co-preach a sermon. We're coming to you from the Crystal Pier, and I just want to thank uh, the owners of the Oceanic Restaurant for allowing us to film here at beautiful Wrightsville Beach. Will you pray with me? Almighty and everlasting God, may the words of our mouths and the meditations of all our hearts be acceptable in your sight, for you are our rock and our redeemer. Amen. One of my favorite magazines is U.S. News and World Report. I like it because they like to rank things. They rank colleges, they rank hospitals, they rank cars, they even rank mutual funds. They used to have a section in the magazine called News You Can Use, which implies that there was news that you can't use which is true. We live in an information society. There's an information glut. Now, when I was a child, I was very curious. I wanted to know everything, how things worked, why things were the way they were, just everything. But part of growing up is realizing that some things are more important than others. And there's really a lot out there that I just don't need to know. We don't want to waste your time this morning, and we don't want to waste our time this morning, especially because it's kind of cold out here. So we're going to try to talk about news that you can use. I feel a little like the chicken that decided to lay an egg on I-40. The rooster said, here's how you do it. You lay it on the line, and you do it in a hurry. Well, that's what we want to do this morning. With the help of my wife, Tara, who serves as pastor at Trinity United Methodist, we want to lay it on the line and do it in a hurry. Now, there's two questions about Easter, the resurrection. What does it mean and why does it matter? There are a lot of things you could be doing right now rather than taking time to watch this. And yet throughout this day, over two billion people, that's billion with a B, will celebrate Easter all around the world. How is it that something that happened approximately 2,000 years ago can still affect so many people today? What does it mean? A lot of people say, I believe in the resurrection. I just don't understand it. When we were in the Holy Land just eight weeks ago, we saw hundreds, if not thousands, of believers there walking the footsteps of Jesus, seeking to learn, to understand, to connect with the life of Christ, His resurrection, and what it means. In a Gallup poll a few years ago, the majority of Americans who never go to church confirmed they still believe Jesus rose from the dead. It's a historical fact. It wasn't done in secret. The whole city of Jerusalem knew about it and eventually the whole Roman Empire. It was news. If CNN or Fox had been there, they would have reported on it. There are at least 15 historical references to Jesus meeting people, touching people, talking with people. One time he even cooked breakfast for his friends on a beach after they had been out all night fishing. And another time he talked to about 500 people after he had risen from the dead. A lot of people saw him. So what does this mean? Three things. Number one, Jesus is who we claim to be. Number two, Jesus has the power he claimed to have. And three, Jesus does what he promised to do. That's what it means. First, Jesus is who he claims to be. John 11:25 says, I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me will live even though he dies. Jesus made some really outrageous claims when he was here on earth. He said things like, I'm the bread of life. The Father and I are one. I'm the only way to heaven, and I'm the Savior of the world. 
Now, a lot of people try to make Jesus into a good teacher, but a good teacher would never say these things. I could go out and teach people throughout the Cape Fear region all kinds of good moral truths, and they'd say, that Doug sure is a good teacher. But if I started calling myself God, you wouldn't think I was a very good teacher anymore. Jesus was either who he said he was, or he was the biggest liar who ever lived. He said, I am God. He made some claims, and then he said, what I'm going to do is going to validate who I am. For instance, one day Jesus cleared the money changers out of the temple. They had turned the temple into a kind of flea market. He went in and drove them all out, and they said, what right do you have to do this? He said, because this is my father's house. They said, really? Prove it. He said, okay, I will. After you kill me, I'm going to come back to life three days later. He claimed to be who he said he was, and his resurrection backs up who he claimed to be. All of us, believers or not, still use Jesus Christ as a reference point. Every time you write a check, every time you date a contract, every time you put an appointment into your smartphone, what's the reference point? 2020. 2020 years from what? When Jesus came to earth. He came to human to get to know us, to live among us. With the birth of God's son, Jesus, all of human history split into BC and AD. Every time you write a date, Jesus is the reference point. Jesus is who he claimed to be. Second, Jesus also shows, shows us he has the power he claimed to have. He said, all power on earth and in heaven is given to me. Because he was God, he could do everything God could do. In John 10, 18, he says, nobody takes my life from me. I have the power to lay it down and I have the power to take it up again. No force could keep him in the tomb. The Romans killed him. They put him in a tomb, put that big stone in front of the tomb and then sealed that tomb and posted a 24 hour guard to stand by. And yet they were just trying to prevent the inevitable. He had all the power in the world. He said, they can't stop me. I can give my life away and I can take it up again. That's where the phrase comes from, you can't keep a good man down. And thirdly, Jesus does what he promises to do. In Mark 10, 34, it says, they will mock and flog and kill me, but after three days, I will come back to life. The cross was no surprise to Jesus. It was all a part of God's plan. When you think about it, there's actually a little humor in the Easter story. How would you feel if you had been the guys who put Jesus to death? You publicly executed this man in front of hundreds of witnesses who had seen him die. Then you have him buried. Then you have a stone rolled over the entrance of the tomb, seal it, and put guards there to protect it. Three days later, this guy's up walking around the city again. What do you say if you meet him on the sidewalk? The angel said, don't be frightened. I know you're looking for Jesus who was crucified. He's come back to life again, just as he said he would. Circle in your Bibles, just as he said he would. He did what he promised. When God makes a promise, you can count on it. Because Jesus did rise again, he is who he said he was. He has the power he said he had, and the, he kept the promises that he made. So what? What does that matter to you? That brings us to the other question we started with. Why does the resurrection matter? What difference does it make? We're talking about news you can use here. So what if Jesus is who he said he was? What does it mean to me in Southeast North Carolina, U.S. of A? What difference does it make during a quarantine that has locked down billions, that's with a B, around the world as we celebrate Easter in our own country, in our own homes, on our own screens today? Well, it means three things. Because Jesus is who he claimed to be and because he has the power he claimed to have and because Jesus does what he promises to do. Number one, your past can be forgiven. And that's good news. Have you ever been halfway through a project and wished you could start over? Like painting the house or redoing the kitchen or whatever. A lot of times I feel like people feel that way about life. They get halfway through life and just wish they could start over and do some things differently. We all have things we wish we hadn't done and said things we wish we hadn't said, thought things we wish we hadn't thought. We all have regrets. We all feel badly about things. We all have guilt. 
The tragedy is when we feel that way and we can't get on with the present and move into the future because we're stuck in the past. Some guilt or regret or something has tied us down. We say, I guess I'll just have to live with this the rest of my life. And we're running around with this baggage, emotional garbage, trying to live life and wondering why we're not happy. Colossians 3.14 is the good news. He's forgiven all our sins and canceled every record of the debt we owed. Christ has done away with it by nailing it to the cross. This is God's pardon program. He says he nailed it all to the cross. Jesus paid for my guilt. That means I don't have to pay for it. He was hung for my hangups. Jesus Christ was nailed to the cross so I can quit nailing myself to the cross. He wants to forgive your past. He says he wants to cancel every record of every debt you owe. Emotional debts, relational debts, every sin. Canceled. How long do you remember a bill that's been paid? I don't remember it at all. Once it's paid, I forget it. And I think the point Jesus is saying is this. Once God's forgiven it, you can forget it. That's good news. Even if there was no such thing as heaven, and there is, but even if there wasn't, it'd be worth it to become a Christian just to have a clear conscience, just knowing that I'm free from all those things I've done wrong. That's good news. Because Jesus is who he said he was, my past can be forgiven. I don't have to go around carrying a load of guilt. It's unnecessary. There is no condemnation awaiting those who belong to Christ. Do you remember that toy called the Etch-A-Sketch? Or was that just my generation? Anyway, it allows you to draw a picture. And if you messed up, you would just flip it over, shake it really hard, and flip it back over, and there would be a clean slate. This is God's Etch-A-Sketch scripture in the Bible. He says, I want to wipe it clean. You can wake up tomorrow knowing that every single thing you've ever done wrong up until this point is completely forgiven. And that's good news. That's news I can use. No condemnation. Jesus Christ did not come to rub it in. He came to rub it out, to wipe it clean. He said, I didn't come to condemn the world. I came to save it. He wants to change you, to help you, to give you a new beginning, a clear conscience. That's news we can all use. Number two, our present problems can be managed. Much of life feels unmanageable, especially if you're a parent. Pastor Rick Warren tells the story of Charlie Shedd, an author, and Charlie tells the story on himself. He says, before we had kids, I used to travel across the country teaching a lecture I called the Ten Commandments for Raising Perfect Kids. That was before I had kids. After he and Martha had their first child, he changed it to Ten Hints for Parents. And after their second child, he relabeled the lecture, A Few Tentative Suggestions for Fellow Strugglers. He said after the arrival of their third child, he just gave up speaking on the topic altogether. Maturity is when you figure out you can't have it all figured out. Maturity is when you realize that you can't manage all that life is going to send you. But God can, and that's good news. I can't control everything in my life, but God can. So I want to hook up with Him and let Him control it and ask for His help. Ephesians 1.20 says, How incredibly great is His power to help those who believe Him, the same mighty power that raised Christ from the dead, the same power that enabled Jesus to rise from death, will help you rise above your problems. The same power that God used at resurrection time 2,000 years ago can be used in your life right now. You don't know what the future holds. I don't either. But that doesn't matter, because even though it's out of my control, it's not out of God's control. God will give me the power to face it. Philippians 4.13 says, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. I want to help you out, God says, no matter how hopeless your situation may be, and I know some of you are really struggling, God wants to say to you, don't give up. No problem is too big for God. No situation is hopeless if you'll turn it over to God. Does scripture enable us to say I'm ready for anything through the power of positive thinking? No, it doesn't say that. I'm ready for anything because I psych myself up? No, it helps us say I'm ready for anything through Christ who strengthens me. 
Why does the resurrection matter? Because my past can be forgiven, my present can be managed, and... My future can be secure. Ron Dunn took his young son to a carnival one time for his birthday. His son picked six boys to go with him, so he just bought a big old roll of tickets. Whenever they came to a ride, he'd pull off one of the tickets and just give them to each of the seven boys one at a time. He said they got to the Ferris wheel and he was pulling off one for each kid and there was an eighth little boy there with his hand out. Who are you? The boy said, I'm Johnny. I'm your son's new friend. And he said, you'd give me a ticket. Did I give him one? Absolutely. When you get to heaven, you'll say, God, I couldn't get here on my own effort. The only way I could get to heaven is being a friend of Jesus Christ. John 17, 3 says, this is the way to have eternal life by knowing the only true God and Jesus Christ, the one he sent to earth. The Bible says that Jesus has already paid for your way to heaven. This is news you can use. That's how Easter makes a difference in your life. I think this is what God wants to say to you today. You matter to me. I understand everything about your life. The future is unknown. We don't know what this uncertain time, when this uncertain time will end or how it will pass. But COVID-19 will not have the last word. Death and disease and sin will not have the last word. Jesus made sure of that. Our debt is paid in full. We matter to God who made us. So let's trust in God and give our lives over to God in full. Just as the flowers are bursting forth to share beauty, just as chicks peck their way out of their eggs into new life, just as the sun rises on this new morning, we enter the world renewed this day by the grace of God. Celebrate this Easter morning with the glory of God shining on our hearts and our faces and in everything we do. We have nothing to fear. God says today, you matter to me. You are mine forever. Alleluia. Christ is risen indeed. Let us pray. Almighty God, Jesus conquered death and offered to us your salvation. Grant that we who greet our risen Lord may follow him from the empty tomb into eternal life, for he lives and reigns with you forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Now the cream blade riseth from the buried grain, wheat that in the dark earth many days has lain, love lives again that with the dead has been, love is come again like wheat that springeth green. In the grave they laid him, love who had been slain, thinking that he never would awake again. Laid in the earth like grain that sleeps unseen, love has come again like wheat that springeth green. Forth he came at Easter, like the risen grain Jesus who for three days in the grave had lain quick from the dead my risen Lord is seen love has come again like wheat that springeth green when our hearts are wintry grieving or in pain Jesus' touch can call us back to life again. Fields of our hearts that dead and bare have been. Love has come again like wheat that springeth green. Now receive this benediction. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you now and forever. Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed.